Okay, I'm out at a project where I was called out to address a problem with drainage and erosion. Years ago, we did a drainage and erosion project for a property. You can't see it right now, but it sits behind this fence in a subdivision, a very nice neighborhood. And it was to address water that was coming from this adjacent, which is now abandoned, uh, trailer park area. And I want to go through... Uh, a problem that we recently had. Uh, last night there was some hum horrendous rainstorms that came through this area and as a result they flooded over, it crested over a large drainage swale that we had installed using riprap uh, rock and we had excavated out a very nice swale going down the hillside with the intent of capturing this water. That drainage system has been in place for uh, I'd say it's probably close to two years now and it's worked uh, with good results and until now. And so recently we had this heavy rain and it crested over that drainage system and I came back here to this trailer park behind the property to identify the cause of this problem and here's what I found. There has been some major land clearing activities that have taken place. These used to be homes where people lived and now they aren't. The whole place is empty and it's been that way it looks for quite some time I guess is a period of roughly uh, six months to a year at this point. So right back here is where our problem is and I want to show you some of the evidence of this problem. Excuse my phone going in multiple circles here. But as you can see, you can see where sediment has been deposited, which is indication of where the water flow is on this property. So there's probably very heavy water flows coming down this slope, because this does slope toward us. And everything now, through the change of grade, you can see where the tire track marks are of the machines and where all these trees have been cleared. So we're in a place where you have vegetation and you have trees and you have root systems. There's a certain amount of absorption of surface water and there's a certain amount of percolation back into the ground but then you go in with a machine and you clear all of this you really create in Georgia red clay you create a pretty dense surface that's going to now take this this area and make it shed or um, distribute this water almost as if it was somewhat impervious because the water could have the ground the red clay is not going to hold that much water and the rest of it's just going to distribute across so where these tire tracks are you can see that there's large puddles so there's a substantial amount of water coming from this upper area traveling across the yard and you can even see the evidence of where tractors have gone in and out here basically creating a river that is pointed right at this neighboring property behind us and so all this water is directed back here and it's just completely overwhelming the drainage system so a few things to check into and be concerned with is in any type of land clearing activity there needs to be a land disturbance permit when you're disturbing I believe it's over 5,000 square feet which clearly this is well over 5,000 square feet this is probably several acres of land disturbance. So they disturb all this land, and so the first thing I'm looking for is a permit box. Where's the permit box showing that this company or this group or whoever did the land clearing had permission to do the land clearing? And the second thing I'm looking for is if they did get a permit, there would definitely be some erosion and sediment controls that would have to be put in place. There should be silt fencing all the way up along here to prevent silt from running off and I don't see any silt fencing. It's like they just came in, did what they wanted to do, no permission, no county uh, authority to do this and they put up no silt fencing. They created this horrendous problem for the homeowner uh, in the neighboring subdivision. So this is something that's going to be have, have to be taken up with at the county level. There are definitely some calls that need to be made. We can provide a solution and fix it again for the homeowner but what needs to happen is this property adjacent to it, behind it, needs to have the proper type of silt and sediment and erosion control. And this grade needs to change in a way that does not allow water to flow right into the other homeowner's backyard. So I hope that information is helpful if you're doing any type of land disturbance activities. Uh, generally, as a rule, it's approximately 5,000 square feet. That'll vary from municipality to municipality. Um, 
but greater than 5,000 square feet, you got to have silt, sediment, and erosion control. Um, we're going to definitely take care of our client on the other side and, and make sure they're fixed up. But we've got to work with the county on this to uh, get some more details and some more information to hold the people that did this work accountable. Thank you.